IGCSE weathering. So, some definitions. Firstly, weathering is the breakup and decomposition of rocks in their place of origin. So weathering does not involve the movement of material. This makes it different to erosion. Because erosion does break up rocks as well, but it involves movement, whereas weathering doesn't. So weathering can be broken into either two or three categories. So firstly, chemical weathering. This is the breakdown of rocks caused by a change in their chemical makeup. So think of it as, as in science we have chemical reactions and physical react. I mean, separating something chemically and separating something physically. Physically, you just take it apart, but the chemical composition remains the same. And separating it chemically means that the chemical composition changes. It's the same with weathering. In chemical weathering, the chemical makeup is changed in the breaking down of the rock. In physical weathering, but it's sometimes called mechanical weathering, well, the break it's basically the breakdown of rocks caused by physical processes with no change in the rock's chemical makeup. That's fairly easy to understand, right? And biological weathering, it's basically um, when flora and fauna, so animals and plants, break down rocks. For instance, growing roots systems inside rocks and then breaking it up or even just burrowing animals who like burrow into the rocks. Okay, so there are different types of chemical weathering. Firstly, we've got carbonation or sometimes called solution. This is basically caused by carbonic acid. So think carbon, Asian carbonic, carbonic acid, which occurs naturally in rainwater. Although only a very weak acid, it chemically reacts with rocks such as limestone and slowly dissolves them. Areas that have standing rainwater are going to experience higher rates of carbonation. Therefore, it is less likely to happen in dry countries and on steep slopes. The dissolved rock then gets washed away. So as we can see on the picture, here it's how it happens. There's rainwater coming down and in this rainwater we find carbonic acid. And this carbonic acid will kind of dissolve away at rocks such as limestone. So then we have another one, it's called hydrolysis. This is when hydrogen in water reacts with minerals in the rocks. So there's H2O, water, but the hydrogen in it will react with the minerals inside the rocks because um, instead of dissolving the rock, the water actually combines with the rock. One example of hydro hydrolysis is, um, yeah, we, that doesn't really make sense, but yeah, basically it's just hydrogen in water reacting with the mineral in the rocks, and this changes the chemical composition. Okay, then we've got hydration. This is when certain rocks are able to absorb water into their structure, causing them to swell, get bigger. That means swell, to get bigger. And this not only exerts pressure because of the growing size, but causes the chemical structure to change. So then lastly, we've got oxidation. This occurs when um, iron compounds within the rock react with oxygen to produce a reddish brown coating, also known as rust. So it's when the iron inside the rocks react with oxygen. Then you get iron oxide, which is rust. That's called oxidation, because it reacts with the oxygen. Okay, now we're going to look at the types of physical or mechanical weathering. Firstly, we've got freeze thaw. So this occurs in an area with moisture and a high daily temperature range that falls below zero. Basically, as water freezes, so basically there are cracks inside a rock and the water enters the rock, okay, during the day. So it's warm, the water is liquid, it enters the rock through the cracks. Then when it gets colder, the water freezes and when it freezes, it expands. So it places pressure onto the rock and around it. Um, and so when it thaws, so when it hardens, more water, no, when it thaws as in it becomes liquid again, more water is able to enter the crack, and then it's able to freeze again. And then always during the day the liquid comes in, then at night it expands and kind of cracks the rock more, and then this always happens again and again. And this slowly breaks down the rock, as we can see here. So, exfoliation. Again, this tends to happen in areas with a high daily temperature range. Basically, during the day, the rock heats up, heats up, because we know when it's hot, stuff ex expands, solids at least. So the rock heats up and expands, and during the night, it cools down and contracts. 
These changes in temperature and shape cause the rock to weaken and layers begin to peel off, just like an onion. So it's fairly similar to a freeze, freeze thaw, except that it's not water that's expanding and contracting, it's um, the actual rock. It's doing it by itself. And as you can imagine, if a solid keeps changing slightly, it will eventually kind of break down. And except in this, this part, it's not breaking down from the inside, but the layers begin to peel off outside. Just like an onion. Okay, so the rate of weathering is like how quick it goes or how much and stuff like that. So there are some factors that can influence it, right? How you can increase the weathering rate. Firstly, geology. The type of rock is extremely important in affecting rates of weathering. Rocks with cracks are more likely to experience increased rate of physical and chemical weathering because the cracks allow water to get in. Also, soft rocks are much more vulnerable to weathering than strong rocks. Also, the chemical composition of rocks is equally important. For instance, limestones that have large amounts of calcium carbonate are way more vulnerable to carbonation than, you know, ones that don't. So then, vegetation. Areas of land that have vegetation are more likely to experience rapid biological weathering. However, they are also likely to insulate the rock from large temperature changes, reducing some physical weathering. Vegetation will intercept rainwater, reducing rates of some chemical weathering. Vegetation can hold rainwater where it is through increasing chemical weathering, and some mosses contain chemicals that can increase chemical weathering. The climate is also very important because hot temperatures increase the rates of chemical reaction, therefore increasing chemical weathering. Areas with high diurnal, which means daily, temperature ranges will see an increase in some physical weathering. Wet areas are going to see an increase in chemical weathering. Wet and warm areas are also likely to see an increase in the amount of vegetation, therefore increasing biological weathering. So, some more factors that will influence it. Relief. A steep relief can increase some forms of physical weathering, but can slow chemical weathering. Most forms of chemical weathering need to be stationary, but steep slopes encourage fast surface runoff. Um, yeah, and however, a steep slope will cause weathered rocks to fall away quicker, exposing fresh rock beneath to be weathered. Also the aspect. This is the direction a slope is facing. The direction it faces can, have an, can affect the amount of sunshine it receives. If a slope is facing the sun, it might have more vegetation growing on it, increasing biological weathering. If it's not facing the sun, it might have less vegetation, which will increase the rates of chemical weathering and physical weathering. Humans. Humans can also influence rates of weathering in multiple ways. For instance, they can add chemicals to water courses, they can deforest or forest areas, they can introduce animals or even re remove animals. So. Why is weathering more rapid in tropical areas than in temperate areas? Well, pretty briefly, tropical areas tend to experience a lot more weathering because of large amounts of rainfall, which increase chemical weathering, since that's where, um, you know, carbonation may happen with the, car with the carbonic acid in um, the rain. And also, in the tropical areas, there will also be large amounts of vegetation, which will increase biological weathering. And there are also nearer to the equator, so there are high temperatures and faster rates of chemical reactions. Also, some areas, especially the high areas and desert areas, have higher diurnal temperature ranges, which will increase also um, physical weathering. So, some case studies. Why... This is pretty much what we just said, but as a case study. Why is the weathering of rocks more rapid in humid tropical regions than in temperate regions? That's an actual past paper question. Well, you would say tropical regions have a higher temperature, more rainfall, which encourages more chemical weathering, such as carbonation or oxidation. Um, then also chemical weathering doubles with every rise of 10 degrees Celsius. And tropical regions do have higher temperatures than temperate regions. So the chemical weathering will increase. Um, then there's also a lot more um, biological weathering, since there are far more plants growing, thus more likelihood of tree roots inside cracks of rocks. Also, the higher temperatures and rainfall cause more rapid release of carbon dioxide from decay of plants. So yeah.
Now, one past paper question was, describe and explain the process of freeze, thaw, weathering, and diagrams. So, like we said before, water enters in cracks. Then the temperature falls, causing water to freeze. And when water freezes, it expands and puts stress on cracks. And then more water, and then basically the water thaws. And then this happens again and again. More water enters the joint, so process is repeated until eventually it actually cracks the whole crack apart.